It's really hard that year that you don't get in and you see other people getting in. Yeah. For me it was anyway, if your plan was to get in like first yeah. first go. How do you feel? Tell us about it. Like I learned from not getting in first year, sometimes things don't always go to plan. Sure. So in my head I was just like, I'm going to do the best I can regardless if I want med or not. And if that matches med's criteria, then that's great. You actually do better when you enjoy things. Don't you think that even when you enjoy it, you're always like, I have to get 90% for this. But that's okay, like, I enjoy this, but then I have to get 90%. Yeah, yeah, I was <laughs> Don't definitely... Don't you have that at the back of your mind? Like, yeah, I did, but yeah. I was like... No one actually cares about the grade that you got at medical school. Yeah. Like, what you take away from med school and from school in general is the person you end up becoming, right? It's not the awards, it's not the scholarship, mm. it's, it's not the grades, it's not your achievements. It's the person that you end up becoming. And you're using that school time as a tutorial to learn about yourself, to learn how to how to self-manage, to learn how to time manage, to learn how to plan long-term goals, to learn your weaknesses and your strength. What would you have done if you didn't make it in this time round? Welcome back to Endoscope, the educational podcast where we look into the guts of various different topics and explore things that matter to those interested in education, healthcare and business. My name is Harry and I'm a fifth year medical student. Joining me today is a current second year medical student at the University of Auckland in New Zealand who entered medical school through the graduate entry pathway. And this is an interesting topic to talk about because most countries in the world now offers postgraduate medicine as opposed to undergraduate medicine, which is, I believe, only offered in the UK, India and a few other countries. And something interesting about her is that she's got a little side hustle that she's quite passionate about. In this first section, we're going to be talking about, well, we're going to be discussing the postgraduate medical entry experience. And then in the second section, we're going to go into the idea of having a side hustle outside of a really busy main gig. So yeah, let's begin by, you know, if you could give us a quick 10 second introduction of yourself, what's your name, what do you do and where are you from? Ten, oh, okay, 10 seconds go. Um, my name is Chanel, I'm from the Bay of Islands and I did my undergraduate degree at the University of Auckland, I mean Dunedin. Now I'm at the University of Auckland doing postgrad medicine. Sure, nice. And so I always start off asking, I always start off asking my guests this question, why, why medicine? Why do you want to be a doctor? Um, I think it came to me when I was about six cutting open rats that had died in the front yard and trying to save the babies because the rats were pregnant. Um, I just found it so fascinating and I've always run around saying that I wanted to be a neurosurgeon. Do, definitely don't want to do that anymore. But um, yeah, I've always had an interest in surgery. When, when you say rats, what, what do you mean? Like, Do you mean like just random rats or, yeah. or just, just random? running through the yard? Wow. Yeah. Like... Were you living in a rural, quite a rural area, or um, was it? Yeah, it's classified rural. Okay. Hence, some rural entry. Yeah. <laughs> True. You've always wanted to be a doctor, and have there been any changes ever? Um, definitely changes in the specialty, but sure. I wrote out a, pl- a life plan when I was like ten, and okay. other than a few bumps in the roads, I've pretty much stuck to it. <laughs> sure, sure. And so along your way, you know, sort of navigating your life, wanting to become a doctor. Do you have any? role models that you kind of looked up to or any people close to you that are doctors or anything like that? We don't have any doctors in the family up until about a month ago. Um, I did have an older cousin who did um, an undergrad degree in Otago, then did honours and then got into med in Otago. Um, So she's just graduated med school. So I would say she was probably like a really awesome person to look up to because she went through it all like the whole way. Sure. Okay. Nice, nice. Sounds like it's been a long-standing dream of yours for, for most of your life. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. been a long time coming. Yeah, all right. So, okay, so let's talk a bit about your your journey into medical school then. You know, you, obviously you graduated high school and then you did first year at, at the University of Otago. You did health science first year, is it? I actually didn't graduate high school. Yeah, graduate? No. Okay, that's good. Yeah. I, I didn't know that, so let's talk a bit about that. You know, something that's, that's, <laughs> that's I wasn't expecting. Very good. Yeah, yeah. I never had the year 13 experience, unfortunately. Okay, sure. Um, didn't go to a board. I did foundation year in Otago um, when I was 16 because I was just so All keen right. to get out of home and get to it. I thought it would give me an, adv- an advantage academically, which mm. it definitely did. Um, oh, sorry. So, so during the foundational year? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's like... 
a lot. It's mainly for people who are internationals, kind of transitioning into the New Zealand yeah, educational I've system. Heard of that. Yeah, and there was a lot of older people in the class in their forties and fifties as well. Mm. Um, yeah, I was definitely the youngest, and it's kind of like it's not really advertised because they do want to keep the numbers low. But my cousin told me about it, hence having a good role model. Um, Did she do it? No, she no, didn't. She did. She um, just Cambridge. went through the, the, the typical pathway, yeah, you know, Cambridge, year, year 12, year 13, and then got yeah. in. Yeah, but she sure. had some friends who did it because they were from overseas, so okay. and, and they highly recommended it. Mm. Um, and I did too, and I was like, cool, yay, let's get out of here, move down. and Yeah, and I loved it. It was such a good preparation for house I first year. Like, pretty much identical, but like a little bit easier and, a, and quite a bit less content. Sure, sure. They tailor the papers to be exactly the same as the papers that are in House I First Year. If you do the House I Stream, there's like mm. Arts Stream, other streams. Okay. Um, you do labs on Otago campus. Sure. You've got like exams, assignments, literally like identical structure. And I think that's where a good place to learn to study university type content. Okay. Mm. Yeah, this is very interesting. I, I wasn't expecting that. I thought you just went through the typical pathway, graduating high school, then, you know, <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. Yeah. yeah. Would you say, so just before I get on to the next follow-up question, would you say that, um, this is spontaneous, by the way, but would you say that when you're in first year, compared to your other schoolmates who perhaps went through the more typical pathway, would you say that you're more advantaged or disadvantaged or about equal? Definitely advantaged. Oh, you think so? For sure, yeah. Really? Okay. Mm. <laughs> Not in like a cocky way, but yeah. I knew how to, like, I knew how I studied sure. at that point, mm. whereas um, NCA and stuff are so different. Like, yeah. you're doing kind of modular, weird, and, and, random and, and, stuff. And when you pass the exams, you, you're you just trying to, like, do the keywords and memorize the mark schemes and yeah. things like that. It's yeah, not really, yeah. yeah. I guess it takes time. It takes time to learn how to self-manage and time manage and learn how to study as well, yeah. right? It was also a huge advantage knowing the area, the campus, mm. um, where, where I like to study, True. how to get around, all that stuff. Like, I'm already overwhelmed mm. here. So I had that sorted <laughs> sure, sure. in house I first year. Very interesting. Very... Um, interesting and well successful now atypical pathway yeah yeah, into medical school so okay so fast forward to your first year after your foundational year Mm -hmm. what's what's the difficulty of the papers like and what's the different sort of papers if you could go into that a a bit for us yeah i think it's pretty similar to auckland you've got um Mm. seven core papers that you have to do and eighth one is optional a lot of people for the eighth do statistics or maori i did maori um so you've got the standard um, first semester anatomy, physics, yep. chemistry, and cells. Yeah, cells. That's such a weird one. Yeah. It's, that's the, I, th- I would say a lot of people say that's the easiest one. It's content heavy, but it's content like heavy, yeah. simply stuff kind kind of. Yeah. So is it just like mostly rote memorization? The, oh, it all is. Oh, okay, like, apart okay. from physics. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, physics. Um, I I enjoy it when I get it right. Yeah. But if you like can't. Yeah. Like, my friend lost her dream of doing med because she just couldn't do physics. And if you fail a paper in first year, you you won't be eligible, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the same for Auckland Uni, yeah. So I think sales for Otago Health Science first year is similar to BioSci 107 at, oh, okay. at Auckland Uni, mm-hmm. um, Biomed. And there's also hubs. Yes. So that's the same as MedSci 142. I've, I've heard of that a lot. Hub so sounds like a cooler name. Hub is just all the human body systems, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. well not all. No, not, not all, but yeah, like... You only do half. A lot, yeah. Kind of another half in the second semester. Yeah, yeah. So, Medside 1, 4, 2 is everything, but like mm. in one. So, okay, yeah. That's a lot. In- interesting. Just to clarify, so you did... Did you do... Did you do... Did you do year 12? Yeah. Yeah, so you skipped year 13 and mm-hmm. you went to your foundational... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Would you say the difficulty of first year compared to your foundational year is quite large or or is it I can't say the difficulty was because we literally learnt like so many similar principles just maybe like one level down sure like we were studying the same laws and physics we would study the same body systems and you know like we were learning the nephron and all this stuff and I'm like we would probably not have learnt this on NCA okay um like really niche stuff that really helped. I would just say the content amount ramped up a bit in um, first year uni. Also in foundation year, it's like also kind of school schedule. You finish at like four latest, nine till like four. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, with like sure. each period and then like a wee lunch break. So is it so is it like uni or, or is it more like high? Th- okay, the content and like the subjects are like uni, but yeah. like the hours are like school. How about the way you're taught? Like, do you, do you go to lectures? Uni, and like, yeah. Uni. Okay. okay, you go to a lecture. Wow, that's actually very interesting. No, you go to a lecture and there's like not many people and a lot of the time um like you just the lecturer will know you by name sure it's like a teacher but but they're also the how lecturer. many people per class um <laughs> my stream was about i wouldn't say more than 20 in my class um for all for all the classes nah i think there was about six house size streams maybe 20 each so yeah and, not and, and when you were in first year it's like oh, like a thousand you're i was a freaking needle in a haystack or a <laughs> algae in a pond yeah. it was like oh God. far out yeah intimidating it was a little bit like harder to make friends i think because it was smaller and with a lot of internationals um you know you gotta really get in there if you want to make friends but what yeah. do you mean in- international do you mean like the students whose english as a second language yeah. students okay yeah yeah and there, sure. there was a lot which was really awesome because far they're like smarter than everyone and oh yeah it was also good not being so competitive. Sure. Um, you know, le- being able to learn the ropes without that extra, are you going to get into med next year? Well, um, but, but at some point you're going to have to do that, right? Yeah, but not that year. And, like, you don't have to – well, I probably should have done the UK that year, but you don't do yeah. it if you don't want to that year. And Sure. Yeah. The, yeah. the non-competitiveness was really helpful. True, true. And were you – did you stay friends with the people in the health side stream when you were in foundational year and when you moved on to first year? I think I would have if I got into med. Sure. But um, I didn't. <laughs> okay. So they did. They got into their dent and med and okay. pharmacy. Sure. And I didn't. So, okay. um, yeah, we did separate separate our paths, but um, mm. we still, like, say hi and things like that. Sure. And and do you mind sharing your grades and... and you know things yeah. in, in first year yeah in foundation year i um got distinction so sure a plus and everything and i was like, oh yeah i'm gonna smash how say like yeah. easy and how say um how say pretty much the same i think i got an a in chemistry and maybe an a in pop health um but yeah everything else a plus so i think but, I, but they only count seven papers right no so they, they'll count your eighth they count your eighth yeah I, 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 okay Sure. People do. That's why people do stats or Māori to up their GPA. Sure. Because it's considered like easier papers. Okay, so so every single paper counts. Yep. Okay, that's the difference. Why do it? If not? I mean, that, that's the difference to Auckland Biomed or Auckland Health Science first year because they only oh, count really? four papers. Four. Yeah. Well, there's eight papers, but only four papers counts towards undergrad entry. So. What, so, so many people must get four A pluses then. Not really, because three of the four papers are in semester one. Oh. So it's it's way more high stress in terms of... Interesting. I think for Otago, in my perspective, yeah. from hearing what you said, it's more like a consistent level of intensity because yeah. all the papers count. Yes. Whereas for Auckland, it's like in semester one, it's because there's yeah. three, three of the four core papers, they call it core papers, oh. are in semester one. So... If you got all A pluses, like yeah. I got all A pluses for for semester one, yeah. I was really relaxed in semester two because the only paper left is Medsci one four two, which is equal to hubs, but it's only one. Yeah, and then the other three are just for fun. F- well, I still got A pluses, you know, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm crazy, but like yeah, but I didn't need to, but I still got it just yeah. just in case I messed up my interview or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair. And I have to go for postgraduate entry mm. because they count those papers ah. yeah so interesting but i didn't need to that oh my god that's such yeah. like a cheat i feel like yeah. i've been ripped off so we have to stress for the whole year right up until exams and you're like chilling in second sem if you've got <laughs> if you got all a pluses in first sem then yeah, you're chilling in second true. sem i guess if you, you didn't then you're more high your chances yeah you, yeah by yeah when i saw my grades in semester one like you're in like, sort yeah. of june and july i'm, I'm like yeah i'm pretty confident I'm like 80% confident I'll yeah. make it in and you know I'm I'm not I'm an outgoing person and mm. I can I feel like the interview some people choose Otago Uni because there's no interview 
I would do the opposite. I would do the opposite. I chose the opposite because firstly, the location thing, because yeah. I want to be close to home. Second reason is the interview. I feel like it's, you know, it's an opportunity for me to showcase myself, like things that Otago might not have seen, like yeah. my potential as a colleague and my insight and characteristics and yeah. things like that. So, I mean, and they did. Yeah, so, I agree. Thankfully. I think yeah. it's ridiculous they don't have a interview. Like, no shade, but I met some of the, I have friends with some of the med students in yeah. Otago and you're like, you can hardly hold a conversation. You don't have any manners. Like, yeah. how is this going to work? True. Well, just to let you know that actually it all gets better because actually throughout <laughs> medical school, they teach you all True. those things. So like, <laughs> if I am to think back now, like I've gone through four years of three years of medical school. And yeah. if I am to take the interview again, I'd smash it because mm. they teach you all the things that you have to be to be a good person, essentially. Yeah, so yeah, that's true. People people do improve over yeah. time. Yeah, I feel like I almost cheated in the interview because I had taken an ethics paper in my okay. undergrad. Yeah, sure. And they were just like asking you all the questions about you know beneficence, non maleficence, autonomy. The, of course. Um, like, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was really um, cool taking that undergrad mm. paper. Probably similar to what you guys study. Mm. Nice, nice. What do you think are some of the benefits and disadvantages of postgrad? medicine because you know undergrad medicine you finish high school you either go straight into med school or you do a year of pre-med then you go into high school go into med school high school go into med school um post-grad you have to do a three year or four years in some Mm. of the countries degree before you can apply what do you think are the benefits or disadvantages i think and i'll chip in as well yeah, yeah definitely lots of both um i think a big advantage that i've only just recently realized is actually knowing what you want to do like you got to be sure that you actually want to commit to this like hundred thousand dollar five extra year degree yep. and you know do that and it's it's good to know what you like and what you're good at and how to study um, I've also heard from my cousin a few advantages actually in clinical years and like research opportunities they love seeing research on her definitely research opportunities yeah she did honors yeah so that's probably that yeah all right um sure yeah <laughs> yeah she's a base so she's like highly like wanted i guess in a pool of medical students sure. because she's got a lot of extra yeah. years under so her belt. she did an undergrad plus an undergrad honors yeah so four years yeah and, and then, then med school. medical sure yeah. yeah and she just graduated mm, yeah she's working in Whangarei hospital now nice nice yeah sure and any disadvantages oh yeah um it's really hard that year that you don't get in and you see other people getting in. Yeah. For me, it was anyway, if your plan was to get in, like, first yeah. first go. How do you feel? Tell us about it. Um, I was, like, done with med. I was like, sweet, I'm going to do embryology. I'm going to do anything. I'm going to do everything other than med. So I was like, oh, well, it's not written in my cards. Like, mm. it's not for me, whatever. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. But um, right towards, like, the end... I was talking to my cousin and my family and they're like, what's the harm? Just do it. Like, I wasn't even going to do my interview. I was, they're like, just do it. Like, you might get in. And I was like, oh, okay. And then once I started thinking about it, I was like, I feel like doing any other career, I would feel like I'm not meeting my full, like, desires and dreams. Sure. Know? So it's like your dream, your dream career and your dream life that you wanted, kind of. Yeah, not not in terms of like being a rich doctor, but of course. I think the restriction in treating people in any other healthcare role, um, like, would be quite hard. Mm. And especially with the degree that I got, that's also another thing that I would recommend is like, with your undergrad, really make sure you're kind of working backwards. Because if I didn't get into med, I really couldn't do anything with my degree other than research, yeah. which is like not me at all. When you say working backwards, do you mean mm. like having other options? open no i would so i would like look at all the careers that you would like potentially be interested sure and then like work backwards be like okay what degrees do i need to get there rather than just saying oh okay like i'm interested in nutrition i'll do a nutrition degree okay because yeah if i didn't get into med what would i do with a biomedical science degree other than like research sure even for embryology you have to do like another two years masters in embryology I'm just going to chip in. I feel like some mm. some advantages that I've heard of is just like what you said, but just having life experience in general, right? Like, you know, 
it all takes time and yeah. if you have more life experience it allows you to perhaps have other hobbies or develop skills that yeah. can help you to become a better doctor in the future right yeah and of course yeah if you're just a 18 year old undergrad and i mean that's me you know <laughs> i mean <laughs> yeah. I, i'm still a very well well, well well-rounded person now yeah. but you know it all takes time right yeah so that's one thing and then there's another part of it being you could explore various different career options like mm. say if you do a health side degree or in, in population health then mm. you might be interested in you know epidemiology and it could you know allow you to basically experiment right it just takes yeah. time yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Get whereas your toes in the field yeah whereas just going straight to a medical degree it's like just a one track very yeah. narrow you, you can't really do anything else with a medical well there's a few other things like <laughs> yeah. whatever people do like management consulting yeah. or something but yeah it's just being a doctor yeah um and the disadvantages of postgrad yeah of postgrad i was thinking like and there's people that i kind of mentor or tutor who mm. didn't get in and is going through postgrad and they're quite concerned about maintaining a high gpa throughout three years yeah fair. Or, or yeah that's fair um it's definitely there like the threshold is there but you don't feel the competitiveness in my opinion and in other classes compared to other people like no one's really asking those sort of questions or comparing grades or trying to do that but I was rural entry so sure I don't think I would have got in with my eight something GPA if I wasn't rural were you in, in allow me to interrupt sorry when you're when you're in first year mm-hmm. were you expecting yourself to get in or were were you like just I'll see how it goes sort of yeah thing. I really thought I would get in you, 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 okay <laughs> yeah that's wow like sure so when you got the email were you devastated no, it was actually the the UCAT, and I did the UCAT sure. in Midway, and mm. I didn't meet the threshold right then and there. So you you, you already so I knew know. Then, yeah. Okay. And I didn't cry. I thought I would, but I didn't because like mm, I miss the UK. <laughs> what can you do? Yeah. But my grades were still really good, mm. and I was like, that's right. Like the option's still there because sure. I still have the good grades from first year. Yep. Um. So yeah, it definitely wasn't as bad, but I know my friend who's general category and she literally is the smartest person I know, Bonnie, if you're watching this, um, she gets like straight A pluses in every single everything and she was worried that she wouldn't get in and I'm like, okay, if you don't get in, then who does? Like, did you get in? She did, yeah. yeah. She's doing it, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of I'm course. Dead. Literally, of course. Um, yeah, she's doing it in Otago. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think there's so definitely she, more she pressure. Must be a th- the fourth year now no no she did postgrad two postgrad two okay yeah oh okay. yeah okay this is actually a funny story as well i thought you're talking about first year no no she didn't get in first year she okay. did postgrad with me but she literally was throwing up sick in one of her second semester exams mm-hmm. and missed because it was online and missed it and they were just like nah bye like she got a doctor's certificate everything and they're like nah bye so she redid that paper got a plus obviously didn't even go to any of the lectures tutored that paper the same year yeah. and like yeah did fine but <laughs> it was honestly so messed up yeah the yeah the the support system that the the uni provides to like pre-med or first year students i feel like it's it's compared to actual medical students it's like night and day like yeah the support i um the support that well i <clears throat> i must clarify that in first year i i was lucky enough that i didn't need any support mm. so i wasn't able to experience the other side but yeah. when i was in med school i i had to for example take this year off for health reasons and yeah. so the support that i got it's like i feel like compared to what i've heard yeah from people in pre-med in first year it's just very different yeah try to you know surround yourself with good people and have a good support network to optimize your chances of of um attaining the good grades and you know optimizing your chances yeah yeah of course did you have like a backup plan if you didn't get in first year (laughs) or you like no i'm just gonna get in (laughs) i get asked this question a lot yeah i was really focused on my plan a Mm. and i was like i'm not gonna think about plan b because i'm gonna make it work yeah and if it doesn't work then i'll think about it then 
mm. because I must admit I was quite narrow-minded. Mm-hmm. And you know, you're eighteen, nineteen. You know, I, and especially my background. And I had an Asian upbringing, and there's only yeah. a few careers, a handful of careers that that's <laughs> deemed successful. From. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you're like disowned. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I was quite narrow-minded. So I, I, I was like. I'm definitely going to be able to do this, and I, I did luckily. Yeah, cool. Yeah, but if I did not, thinking back now, I would still do a. I would still go for a postgrad That's entry, great. so it's it's something that I wanted to do. Mm. I know that, and I don't regret it. So, I'm glad that, being so narrow-minded at the time, that I've made the right choice for mm. me now, and um, I'm happy. Paid off. Yeah, it paid off. Yeah. How did you find like? the UK did you put much effort into that I did I actually the right the right thing to do was I think I should have prepped either during summer or prepped Mm. a bit maybe when I was free even a few months the year before yeah um I didn't do that um so I had to I worked really hard during first year I, I spent maybe an hour to an hour and a half a day every single day for from March onwards to practice the UK and I scored around 80th percentile oh yeah so I'm I'm nice yeah but um 80 percentile o- overall but I scored under 20th percentile for verbal <laughs> reasoning <laughs> so if I had applied to Otago, Otago that that was under the threshold so mm. I wouldn't have gotten in so I, yeah yeah it's weird that I only have thresholds for some of the do they sections yeah verbal reasoning decision making and maybe one other. They kind of change it every year. Like, if you look on Yeah, the... I, I forgot, but in Auckland, there's no threshold. I know, that's yeah. so much better. Because yeah. I feel like that's when someone who's more rounded, like, not so great in this, but I can pick up here, can really, like, come through. Yeah. Whereas in Dunedin, like, you've just got to make this, this, and this. It, which, in some ways, it's fair enough, right? Because, like, yeah. you want someone who's well-rounded in all realms of, of life, yes, right? Yeah. Whereas, I mean... In real life, like you're supposed to be able to make up your deficit in one in one area with some other area, but yeah. but in a way, like you want someone who's well rounded, right? Yeah, yeah, and that's why I'm like, okay, why are you not interviewing the future doctors of True. your university? Like, yeah. it honestly baffles me. I think they just don't have the time, or yeah, and and, and it costs like it costs a decent amount of money to set things up, and that's what we were told, like. Um, during the COVID years when there's a bit of a controversies regarding... Controversy. Yeah. <laughs> regarding, like, like controversial discussions around yes. oh, yeah. GPA and grade Entry. entries. They were talking about how, you know, you can do two interviews. But, yeah. but we were... The response that we got was, you know, money constraints and, you know, it, you, yeah, it takes time and... But they do money. one for dentistry. I know, but... You know, that's, that's, yeah. So Th- like, that's what, yeah, <laughs> true. And they have a higher threshold of UK for dent, but the, l- yeah. lower grade one. Lower GPA, mm. yeah. It's weird. Mm. What's the main thing that brings you stress during your undergrad three years? Mm. Not getting A pluses. It was a really hard thing to like change my um expectations Mm. of myself I still wanted them but like I was also going through some mental health issues um not because I didn't get in but because of other things and I was only getting like A's and like I got my first A minus and I was like oh my god it's like it's over for me (laughs) like it's never just never gonna happen um but luckily with postgrad like you can make that up in third year and they actually weight the third year's papers more Mm, okay really. yeah they mean mm. more nice like, nice points sure um so yeah other than like and not having as perfect grades because it's also very different like I found the change of first year papers to second year third year papers so hard like first year is rote rote learning mm. memory this copy copy whereas second year third year it's a lot of like interpretation and writing things and you know things that the marker can be quite sub- objective of like a little bit opinion based which I found a bit harder sure but um I'm glad I have that now like different experience different yeah that's um, that's what I've heard from um post students from 
in medicine who went through Auckland Uni as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, would you say that, and I've interviewed another second year who's in your year now, who's mm. entered through undergrad pathway, and he was saying that he found the idea that you have to be consistent all the time stressful. Mm. Would you say that's stressful? Or, or there was definitely that pressure in the back of my mind, but I yeah. tried not to feel that because it's actually just like not going to help. And like I learned from not getting in first year, sometimes things don't always go to plan. Sure. So in my head, I was just like, I'm going to do the best I can, regardless if I want med or not. And if that matches med's criteria, then that's great. But there's like, I didn't change my study tactics at all because that's just like how I studied. Yeah. Um, so I don't think I felt that as much, like trying to consist it, because I did have that period of time where I gave up on med. Sure. <laughs> um, so Was yeah. that at the start of second yeah. year? Or just, yeah. yeah, pretty sure. much, yeah, most of second year. Sure. And you chose your, you enjoyed your undergrad, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I loved so my major. There's some people who pick their undergraduate papers and this applies to all around the world. Like yeah. some people pick the papers based on how easy it is to get like a good GPA, whereas some people pick it based on really what they enjoy, right? Mm. Did you do your combination of both or, or is it just what you enjoy? I just purely pretty much did what I enjoy. Mm. Um, other than I did one summer school paper and sure. wanted that one to be an easy one because you actually do better when you enjoy things. Don't you think that even when you enjoy it, you're always like, you're doing it, and then at the back of your mind, you're like, okay, I, I have to get 90% for this. But but that's okay. Like, I enjoy this, but then I have to get 90%. Yeah, yeah. I yeah definitely, don't you have that at the back of your mind? Like, yeah, I did. But yeah. I was like, it's so much easier to spend a lot of hours studying something that, that you enjoy. Like, I would put so sure. much more hours into my, like, reproductive anatomy papers and mm-hmm. my ethics paper than I did for, like, this crappy microbiology one that I did, and I hated. Did you get good grades for that paper? Micro? Yeah. No. <laughs> Well, okay. Was it a compulsory one for your your degree, no, or was I it just, one like, that was, you picked? Yeah, I was fresh out of first year. I didn't even know what to pick. Sure. I was just like plotting random here and there. I got like an A minus. That's when I was like, fuck. Um, then like I did a pathology paper, and I was like, sure. this is sick. Like the content was heavy, and people other people would hate it. But like I did be- better on that one. Sure. All um, right. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. One thing I was going to ask before that I kind of went off my mind was. Do you think you had a mindset change in terms of like being so focused on your final goal? Yeah, definitely deciding that I did want to apply for med. There was a little bit of like, okay. Like, what, what, what I mean was in first year in pre-med, you're like, I'm definitely going to get in. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. Whereas in your undergrad, in yeah. the three years, there's a change of mindset. Would you say that's the case or not really? Um, like if I was confident in getting in. Or or if, if you're open to, you know, not getting in. Oh, yeah, yeah. I definitely was more accepting that like, it might happen and it might yeah. not. And I'm so fine with both. I'm going to mm. have an amazing life either way. Sure. I'm, you know, I'm still going to have a house over my head and <laughs> sure. food on the table. Nice. Um, so I, it was much more easier after having that such a tough rejection. Like I was probably being too cocky thinking that I'd get in. And then when sure. I didn't, I was like, um, okay, you're lost. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, definitely a big, just got to roll with it and be okay with sure whatever happens. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There's a saying in Chinese, um, failure is the mother of success. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you, you, yeah, you, you know what that translates to, just because, you know, you, you, you fail and then you kind of learn from your mistakes and then you do it again then you succeed yeah and it felt so much better (laughs) getting in second time I was like it was so much more like rewarding I was like oh my god like failed the first time like and then turned it up a notch and yeah like and then and you also have time to do other things like I got some side things and had more free time like third year I had a lot of free time sure like I was chilling really I did three papers and yeah but you said in third years the papers are more yeah, have, like, the, the, they are, but in terms of contact hours, you're sure. pretty, you're chilling. Are there anything that you would have done differently in first year or something you would advise people going into pre-med? Yeah, I would say have like... A Both few, in terms of s- strategies and mindset. Yeah, I think in mindset definitely just like things happen and if it doesn't go to your plan, 
that's okay because there's another plan for you and like mm. everything really does happen for a reason you just have to keep like your passion in the back of your mind and think okay if I can't really apply it into this how can I apply it elsewhere because like I was still going to do something in reproduction and sure. you know elsewhere um, and study for the UK yeah definitely <laughs> that's one thing that you don't want to cram yeah. I think because yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's not memory or anything it's not memory it's like you have to set up a pattern of thinking that's specific to yeah. that exam and it's if you've ever done it before it's like to, to me it's like the most anal exam that I've ever done in my life oh, like it's, it's not it's I not like it. any any kind of studying or any kind of material no, that I've yeah. done before it's the most random thing and when people ask me like oh what is it doing I'm like oh it's like shapes and like reading 100 miles per hour and like all this round. The only, like, okay one was situational judgment. That's like, okay, sure, I understand why you want to teach me. <laughs> like, yeah. why do I care if John's mum is 50 and her fi- her dad is five and how old's the daughter? Like, yeah. I yeah. don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. They were so, yeah. Did you find, like, the transition from first year to second year, like, content-wise, was it quite different or is first year, like, quite a good representation of second year med? I would say that second year med is around twice as hard as first year in terms of content. Uh-huh. But the actual, like, and I've said this in the previous podcast, what's difficult about med school, it's not like, it's not conceptually that difficult. Like, there's a yeah. few things that are con- conceptually difficult, you know, ECGs, um, yeah. cardiac physiology, mm. um, some neuro things that's kind of mm. complex, but it's not like, it's not like, physics and math com- complex mm. like it's a concept that might be a bit complicated at the get-go but then once you've gotten once you've know, known it well you can just memorize the concept yeah it's not like something maths where you know a formula and you understood it but there's a question and you still can't apply it mm. it's, it's not like that it's still mostly memorization mm. yeah so it's the volume of content that's difficult yeah. it's not like it's not actually difficult a, a lot more than as a first concept. year yeah, I'd, I'd say around twice as much. I'd say <clears throat> it would be, what would you say is the most content-heavy paper in Health Science First Year at Otago? Content-heavy? Yeah. Um, probably Hubs, Hubs, yeah. Hubs 1 and Hubs 2? Hubs 191 and Hubs 192. Yeah. 2 was probably harder. Yeah. 192 just because of the systems. Yeah, I, I would say it will be equal to maybe like seven hubs seven probably yeah or or six or seven because yeah per semester that's gonna be hard sorry sorry not per semester maybe like four hubs per semester because i would say like second year med compared to auckland biomed would be like three or four med side one four twos per semester yeah crazy so i guess at least coming out of first year you're like prepped for that i'm like well, but not really. <laughs> but again, in order to get an A plus, the amount of work that you have to do to get an A plus, it's mm. like so much more than A minus, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's like twi- like point. to go go from an A to A plus. Yeah. It's, it's like, like twice hard. as much yeah. the effort, and yeah. to go from B plus to A, it's like twice as much. So if mm. you just aim for B, B B plus, I don't know how much I was studying like. 13, 14 hours a day in first year. Mm. When I was in second year, I. I was only studying like, t- like, two hours a day outside of lectures. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Did you care about your grades? Not really. Yeah. There were some topics that I cared about. So particular topics like I really enjoy cardiology. Yeah. So I kind of I studied that because I really enjoyed it and I wanted to get a good grade just to prove to, just to prove to myself that I'm good at it. Yeah. And I got I an A plus. And I nice. but I studied a bit more. Like I studied maybe three to four hours a day outside of lectures for that particular topic. Wow. Yeah, but the, it, it's not, yeah. Because you enjoy it. I enjoy so it, it's yeah. it's easier to put and in the for, hours. Yeah. For something like, which we'll get into later on, for something like <laughs> reproduction and development, I, I really didn't like that paper <laughs> and I I really didn't study and I got like, it's still decent, like B minus or something, <laughs> which is okay. But you didn't like get kicked out of med school? No, I, I actually, I got C minus for... <laughs> One paper, which nice. is head and neck anatomy, and Ooh, to this day, to this day, it's still the worst, yeah, worst area that I 
<laughs> that I do yeah. in both clinical medicine on the wards mm. when doctors ask me, you know, what's... Oh, do they actually do that? Yeah, what's the what's the nerve that, that supplies blah, blah, blah in, yeah. in your neck? And I just don't know. Yeah, and um, know. yeah, to this day, it's still my worst performing area mm. and also in progress tests. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Can't be good at everything. Like, yeah, can't be good at everything. And you well, learn you, everything. Yeah, well, you have to learn everything to be a well-rounded doctor. Yeah. That's what medical school's for, for, for you to... Um, it's like a tutorial, right? Mm. Yeah, school is like a t- tutorial to life. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just before we finish the first section, what would you have done if you didn't make it in this time round? I had a couple options. Um, I was going to do my master's in nursing, which is just a two-year thing, and then you're a registered nurse. Yep. Um, but again, I was like, oh, that's maybe a bit restricting. In terms I've got of friends who's, who's doing that who, yeah. They wanted to get into med and they did. Yeah. Yeah. An undergrad and they had honours. Oh, yeah. They didn't make it in, so they're oh, doing. wow. Yeah, they're doing masters of nursing now. Wow. Yeah. Um, I was also gonna work full time, for my part time job. Sure. Um, or I was like, oh, fuck, I'll just travel. I'll just spend all my money and travel. All oh, right. Yeah, but I'm I'm glad <laughs> it worked out this way. Sure, sure. Do you I'm think you're? Do you think you're prone to imposter syndrome? Nah. But you mentioned that you're, that you're scared of, like, not being good or something. You, you mentioned that. I don't like not getting good grades because okay. that's just been, like, my thing my whole life. Like, sure. shit at sports. Last person okay. to get picked for the sports team, honestly. <laughs> sure. Skipped cross country. Yep. Didn't really do anything else, like, other than now the gym, but... That's very interesting because when I ask people that, with that thinking, whether they they are prone to imposter syndrome a lot of people say yes yeah i've heard a lot about it and i think that's like, i know high five because i don't get imposter syndrome yeah either. i'm like i no, never get imposter i work syndrome. for this like this yeah. is for me <laughs> yeah same like I, I never get imposter syndrome yeah, yeah. That's just because a yeah the the way i think about it is like even if i'm shit at something right like i know that i'm shit because I, ha- I haven't done enough like, yeah, yeah with yeah. time in 10 years enough. time I'll be as good as the other people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and exactly. I'm here for a reason. Yeah. You know? and yeah. yeah so Everyone it's, starts it's not, it. Yeah. Start. You have to start somewhere. Yeah. You know? That's how I think. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. So some tips. The the biggest tip I would give to new medical students is that anything that you do, as long as it doesn't get get you arrested and doesn't <laughs> kill you, is a fair game to try. So just try network. Yes. Try take advantage of different opportunities. Join clubs. Mm. Learn things. Learn about yourself. You know, school. I think about school like a tutorial to life, right? Like mm-hmm. school is like a tutorial to the game of life. Mm-hmm. And your what you take away from school, like not honestly, people care about grades so much. Like yeah. a lot of my peers, they still care about in med. Yeah, in med, they still care about grades, but mm. actually when you become a doctor and I've heard about this and please correct me if there's any senior medical students or doctors out there who please correct me if I'm wrong but no one actually cares about the grade that you got at medical school yeah like what you take away from that from from med school and from school in general is the person that you end up becoming right it's not the awards it's not the scholarship Mm. it's it's not the grades it's not your achievements it's the person that you end up becoming and you're using that school time as a tutorial to like learn about yourself to learn how to how to self-manage to learn how to time manage to learn how to plan long-term goals you know to learn how to learn your weaknesses and your strength Mm. and so just make the most out of the especially the next two years because grades really doesn't matter to learn about yourself and learn about life that's my biggest cool it's my biggest tip and just to learn what, what 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 you enjoy you know find out Find out the area of medicine if you want to be a doctor. Yes. Find out the area of medicine. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm sure for you, you already know the area <laughs> of medicine that you want. That's one of the advantages of being a postgraduate yeah. because yeah. you you already have that time. So, yeah, learn about yourself. And when you have an idea of what you want to go for, just go for it. And if you figure out that you want to change, and I always say this, you know, I reserve the right to change what I want to do yeah. in light of new evidence. So if I figure out that I don't want to do something, I'll 
give it up and try something else. Yeah. You know? Yeah, fair. Yeah. A lot of people are scared to quit, but I think it's, you know, <laughs> if you don't love it, then don't waste There's time. this thing called the sunken cost fallacy. I, I'm heard, not sure I heard, heard of heard that, of it. but not sure it's just that it's just that you're afraid of or you're fearful of giving up something that you've been doing for a long time or you've put in lots of effort to Mm. in pursuit of another thing that might be more might give you more reward in the future Mm. just because you've put in so much effort in the past so a common example people struggling to give up their nine to five job that they've you know whatever being a lawyer being a doctor that they've been working for the past 10, 15 years mm. in pursuit of a business opportunity, for example. Yeah. Yeah, just that mindset. But, you know, sometimes you need to step out of the comfort zone to try new things, right? Yeah, for sure. So that's, that's what I think. But, yeah, that's the, the tips. Step out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Try new things. Learn new. Take advantage of the opportunities and um, learn about yourself and enjoy. Yeah. My cousin's was do the bare minimum. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do, yeah, that's which is kind of so really good, similar. Do the bare minimum in terms of academics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, the maximum. Do the maximum in all oh, other yeah. realms of life. Yes. Yeah, and that's a good way to round off the first section. So we'll take a quick break, drink cool. some water, and we'll talk a bit about your lovely side hustles and how you got into it. <laughs> <laughs> 